Hello everyone. So I recently bought this Bible study and it's called the Bible study. It's um to do a Bible study within a year and it goes um so here's like the one year plan and then it goes into each individual book. So it has like history and stuff and then it goes into each individual book. And um, so this one's Genesis. These, um, I plan on doing this uh, without it taking a year. I plan on taking less time. They come bound like this. So the white one is the Old Testament and the black one is the New Testament. They come bound like this. But I wanted something that I could lay flat a little bit easier, flip through a little bit easier. And then if I was looking at the key kings, for instance, on this page, and I had my Bible open and stuff, and I just wanted to look at only that and not whatever was on the other page, I could do that. I went it spiral bound. So... That is what I'm going to do today with this one. I already did it, obviously, with the Old Testament, and now I'm going to do it with the New Testament. Um, the spiral size I'm using is one and a quarter inch, I believe. Um, yeah, one and a quarter inch. And then the machine I'm using to to get to be spiral bound is the cinch. I happen to have the one that is the high use swap branded one. I know that um, We Are Memory Keepers came out with the cinch without the high use swap brand. It was just the We Are Memory Keepers and then they recently came out with this one. Um, so what you'll need is some sort of binding system. I know there's a couple of other ones that are out there. This one just happens to be the one I'm going to use. And then you also need um, the binding wire, obviously. And then you need a... Paper trimmer. I could not think of what it was called. Um, I'm probably these. I'm probably gonna use this one. It's a little bit more compact. And then you'll also need an exacto knife. And I think that's it for this project. So I'm going to do different stages because it's going to take me a while. So I'm going to do each stage and then come back and then do a stage and come back. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take off the covers. I don't want the covers on there while I am taking the book apart. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this to lay as flat as possible. This probably will not fit in the paper trimmer. I haven't tried it. Um... I'm just going to use my exacto knife very carefully because I don't want to cut into any of the pages or to cut into the um, the cover itself. So that kind of scored it for me. And I'm going to very carefully take it off. So I set this one aside. And I'm going to do the same thing with the front. Get this open up as much as possible. Bend it down. Sorry for the shakiness. It's because I'm pressing pretty hard on here to get this to, to do what I want it to do. Again... The sharper the blade you have, the easier this will be. My blade is not that sharp. Um, it's also slightly filled with wax. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, while I'm thinking about this, trim this down to 8.5 inches. 
to get this side to be a nice smooth side. This book does measure eight and a half by 11 once done. And I'm going to do it slightly. So kind of smooth it out a little bit. Okay, do the same thing with this one. Again, so I'm going like just shy of eight and a half just to get that edge nice and clean and crisp as much as possible. Okay. So once you do these, you're going to put these back to back. So the covers are going to face each other. And then um, once you start to take apart the book, you want to keep it in sections together. So, this is what we have now of the book, and it has this, um, the spine on it. Go ahead and take that off. And then, I can... And as you work, more of the spine will come off. So, um, I'm going to work from... It doesn't really matter which way you go if you start at the front and start at the back. As long as you stay the same way, you don't want to be mixing up the signature. So, right here you can see how there's different signatures. This. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to start at the front. I'm going to open up that first signature. So you can see it right here. This is the first signature. I'm going to go ahead and crease this. Let me zoom in. I'm going to crease this so that way I know where that signature is. And I'm going to go to the halfway point of that signature, which is right here. And then I, you can kind of see the threads right here. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to pop those threads open. Can't tell. There it goes. Okay. I'm going to do that all along the book. Being careful not to, to nick any of the pages. And you're going to go ahead and go back to the end of the signature where we crease it. You're going to lightly pull. If you start to feel too much resistance, stop because you don't want to tear the pages. But once you pull, it comes out. And now you have that signature like that leave it closed don't open it yet set it to the side somewhere and then just do that with all the rest of them i'm going to go ahead and do a couple more on camera and then i will do the rest off camera and i will come back when i get to the next step so again i'm looking for my signature out okay so there's my signature kind of getting it off of this glue and go ahead and crease it the creasing it just kind of helps it along it's not a need to do but it's nice to do that go to the middle of the signature, which is right here, where it was at, and then again pop those threads open. Okay. 
I don't know how many signatures this book has. Um, I know that the first book had like, the Old Testament had like 240 something pages. This one has like 220 something pages. But I don't know. I didn't count the signatures. And of course you can do this with any book. This just happens to be the book that I am doing it with. Okay, so go ahead and open back up. Typically, the signatures do end where the final thoughts of whatever that section is at. Typically. Not always. Okay, I was at the wrong final thoughts. There was one in between. Go ahead and give a slight pull. Again, if you feel too much resistance, you don't want to tear any of the pages. Come back over here on this side and see if you can't get some of that glue off. There it goes. Okay. Okay, so once, so you can kind of see how rough this edge is. We will fix that in a little bit. Um, so that's fine. Once you get to an area where you can get a good chunk of the glue in your hand, go ahead and rip some of that glue off. Because that will make things a lot easier for you when you get to the next sections. It'll also help you kind of define the signatures a little bit better. Okay, so. Let me do one more and then I'll go ahead and I'll do the rest off the camera. Um. The glue in the other book came off a lot easier than this one. Okay, let me pause. Okay, so I got good chunks of the glue off. The rest of it I'll get off whenever I get to the pages. So let me go ahead and open up the net signature again, laying it flat. You can try to cut through here to get those, um, the, the, um, the strings, but I prefer to do it from this side. I can control it a little bit better and I'm not going to hopefully rip it. Okay, so see how that one, even just taking off that little bit of glue at the front and at the back helped it. Of course, once we get more towards the middle where the glue has not come off, it's going to get a little bit of a problem. Okay. This signature and then gently pull. Okay, so let me go ahead and 
do the rest. Um, and then I will be back once I have all the signatures uh, separated. Okay, so I went ahead and I um, took apart the entire book. I have all of the signatures right here. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to cut these down. So this is going to be eight and a half inches is where I'm cutting it at. Um, you don't, I mean, if you want to look at that, you can line it up. But for the most part, I just open up the signature, put it in here, and then make sure that's all together correctly. And then um, make sure the it's pressed flat. And right here, the center is lined up in that little groove. So after I do that, I just go ahead and I cut and I put them off to the side. Again, keeping them in orientation or in the right um, order. So, it shouldn't take too long. Some of the paint whenever you're taking them apart might still have like the um some strings in them especially if it's one of the strings that was knotted just make sure that you um take those out so that way it's easier to cut through them And this is also going to allow everything to kind of lay flat. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the rough edges right now. If I come across one that's particularly rough, I will trim it down. But for the most part, I'm not going to worry about it. And this, I don't know how many pages are in each signature of this particular uh, book but I'm finding that my paper trimmer doesn't have a problem cutting through them so as long as you can cut through them then you don't have to worry about pulling them apart if you do have to worry about pulling them apart make sure that you're keeping the page numbers in order so when you take this apart with the um, strings, when you're doing that, the glue kind of wants to take itself off. So you don't have to do too much to get the glue to come off of the spine. Occasionally, though, you do have to kind of work at it. But Okay, I move that. Okay. So I'm just going to keep going. And I think I will go ahead and I will pause this and I will be back after I've finished cutting all of these. Okay, so I'm down to the last three signatures, so I wanted to go ahead and start the video back up while I do these last three. Um, one thing that I also wanted to, to know is that there's a lot of these pages in here, which um, just had these really cute kind of like poster type things on them. And depending on what's on the other side of it, you could take them out and frame them. Um, this one has like the book of, of John on the other side, the intro for it. So you might be able to do that with that. But 
Typically, I think the last signature in each book is nothing but those type of papers. So those would be really easy to, to do that with and really fun to do that with. Okay. This one... So this one, let's see if I can get this to lay flat. Oops. Okay. For some reason, this is really, let me take this out and I'll do it in two separate ones. Because it was not wanting to line up. Okay. So ahead and put this one because okay so this goes there that goes on top of it this goes right there and this one goes here and I am actually going to go ahead and trim this down a little bit because this one is really rough on the edges so again, eight and a half is where you want to be at. If you're slightly under eight and a half, because it's a spiral round, you should be fine. There's plenty of um, uh, space between what is printed and the spine of the book. So, okay, and then this one. I might do a full review of this Bible study if that is something that y'all think would interest you, um, just the layout of it and whatnot. Oh, no. Shoot. Okay. Sorry. My camera switched angles on me and I did not realize that. I have no idea how much of that was actually in the wrong orientation hopefully it wasn't too much of it though okay i did go ahead and get <laughs> did get all of that done um here are my two covers again and this is the front of the book this is the back of the book um i'm going to go ahead and set my covers aside because i don't need them right this moment and then <laughs> Now we're going to go ahead and start to punch this. So, what I am going to do for my sanity is I'm going to do every the first punch for all of them. And then I'll come back and I'll do the second punch. Um, so, you want to make sure that all of your pegs are actually pushed in. And let me actually clean this out from yesterday whenever I made the first one I did have to clean that a couple of times okay so like I said all of them are going to be this that way um it doesn't really matter if you start with them facing this way or if you start with them facing this way as long as when you clean them in the stack they're all doing it the same way if you flip and flop then the line then the um things may not line up i'm just going to do it all this way and then put them over to the side so push down back up okay and i've got what is going on? All of them are pushed in. Hmm. There it goes. It wasn't up all the way, maybe? It should have been going in all the way. Hmm. Okay. Yep, 
may have been too many things at one time. So let me grab a smaller stack. I don't know why and making sure it's pushed all the way over this way push it down back up and then there's the holes go ahead and move this so that way it's not like right in the camera's view that should be a little bit better okay Sorry for the shakiness, that's because my table is a little bit wobbly. Um, so yeah, you're just gonna go ahead and do that with all of these, making sure it's all the way back, all the way that way, push down, lift back up, and then put back in order over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause there and I will be back once I go to do the other one. Now, actually, I'm going to keep talking for a few minutes. If you're doing this and you don't know what size you have of your book or if your book is not um one of the standard sizes that's on here i do recommend you making a template go ahead and grab a piece of paper that's the size of your insert um and then make a template for where you want the book to be the what comes with the cinch does have some of the standard sizes but it doesn't have all of the standard sizes and then it also of course you can customize it to whatever size you want um but this happens to be one of the standard sizes so this already has the guide thought out for me and everything all I have to do is just punch the holes and follow the guide but again if for a reason you don't have you you aren't using one of the standard sizes go ahead and get yourself a piece of paper that has the that's the same size as what you intend to use and use and create a guide okay Now I'm going to go ahead and press pause and finish doing this. Okay, so I went ahead and I finished that. I'm going to go ahead and do the covers. Again, line them up, put them in there, punch through, and then put that right there. Okay, so this tells me on here that if my paper is 11 inches, I need to pull out peg number 10. So right here, these pegs are numbered. So I'm gonna pull out peg number 10. Now, peg number 10 is pulled out. I don't have to worry about pulling out the peg the rest of the time. I don't have to worry about going back and forth between pulling out a peg and not pulling out a peg. It's all pulled out for me, so I don't have to worry about that. There's another little thing that you need to know. This is right here. And um, you're going to use this to line up the pages. So I'm going to go ahead and extend this piece out all the way. There is this right here that you can put your coils on. Um, so that way while you're punching it, you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, but I find that that gets in my way whenever I'm trying to punch it. So I'll save that for last. 
So with the covers, I'm going to go ahead. You want to put this piece right here that is on the side into the second hole. Let me make sure that's extended all the way. Line those up. Put that piece. Why is it not? Okay, so even with it extended all the way, sometimes it won't go. Um, I'm having to push it up over here. Okay, so just go down, push it back up, and lift this up. And for the most part, it gives you, well, this one didn't really do a pretty even job at all of doing that. In the world is this not? Extend it all the way. Hmm. It is marking it at 11 inches. I don't know why there's such a huge gap on one side, not on the other side. Because, is that the same size? Well, yeah. I guess that was the same size gap. Okay. Ignore me. For whatever reason it does that, you could probably punt, pull out um, hole number 9 also if you want to. I'm not going to do that though. So now, just the same thing, take all of your sheets, make sure that you line them up with the second hole in that peg, push them all the way back. See, this doesn't go, if I do it to 11, this doesn't line up. Hmm. I am talking to myself okay I want to see something really quick I'm going to use the about the author page because I can take this out so if I do that yeah it does do a double punch it doesn't line up so I'm gonna go ahead and move that one out of the way um so then make sure you line it up not with the 11 right here but with the the peg over here like it says to for a reason it's not actually there it goes okay and push down pull up there you go now there's no more double pull so I'm going to do that with the rest of them And then I will be back. To go ahead and finish with the coil. Okay, I'm down to my last couple of sections of um, getting this finished punching. And then I am going to go ahead and get it bound. So the brand of coil that I use is called True Bind and I get it off of um off of Amazon and like I said earlier the for this size I'm using one and a quarter inches. I don't know if they sell anything over one and a quarter inches. That just happens to be what I was able to find the biggest of. Um and I bought the the biggest one I could find with the intention of doing um, a Bible even though Bible pages are, are still relatively thin once you get the entire Bible it does get to be kind of thick okay let me just get this Okay, so makes confetti too. Um, I'm not going to worry about my covers. I'm just going to worry about this right now. And I want to start at the back. So I'm going to flip all of this over because this is my front. This is my back. Flip all of this over. And of course, this page that I was trying to test it, I'm not going to use because they don't line up so 
Hmm. Yeah. I don't need that one in there. Okay. So, flip that over. Get that over there. This is a binder, binding wire that I use. I put this side on here, and then I um, thread the pages through this side right here. Go ahead and close that. So, what I do whenever I'm working on something that is this big, I do try to actually have it hanging off the edge of the table um, because that just kind of gravity just kind of helps it to thread through and to work its way down the coils. The first couple sections are always the hardest to get on um, because it is trying to line up the wire and get everything the way that it is uh, supposed to be. I'm not putting the covers on yet. The covers will go on last and the reason why you put the covers on last is to hide the seam where the closure is inside of the book. go ahead and I'm gonna have to hang this off like I do to get this to go on there straight. Okay so um let me go ahead and finish putting these on I'm trying to see it's gonna look like this basically just hanging off the side of the table. Let's see if I can get a couple like that. Okay. Yeah, it needs to hang off the table. This is another reason why I don't thread them through as I am punching because I need it. Um, it takes a little bit to get them all on there. And I don't know if it could be because I bought the wrong type of wire. There's like three one pitch and two one pitch. I think I bought two one pitch, whatever that means. And this, the cinch might need a three one pinch. I'm not 100% sure that could be what the problem is. Like it could completely be my lack of knowing what type of wire I need to buy. Um, but. It does work, it's just a pain getting it to get on there for the first time. It does seem like if you have more pages, it goes a little bit easier. And I think that that is just because... Um... It just isn't a stack. Okay, so I got the entire book on here minus the covers. So you want to put the front cover on first. 
and then the back cover on second with the two pieces touching each other. So that way when you go to do the seam, it's going to be on the inside. Okay, go ahead and pull this off. Lay this as flat as possible. I'm going to open this back up. On this side, it's going to give you little measurements. I'm actually going to set mine for one and an eighth. Um, and then you're just going to go ahead and put this in there. Push down. And you're going to do it a couple of times, but this one in there, push down, that one in there, push down, up. So once you've kind of got it started, you can make sure that everything's going to line up and you can push down further. To kind of close it. And then again, if you need to move it a little bit to get it to close properly, you can just make sure you don't stick your fingers in there when you're doing it. Okay. So that is now closed in the spiral is all nice and done so when you go to flip this the this piece right here where it's bound at is going to be on the back cover and it's going to be hidden just have to kind of work all the pages around so they get used to being in spiral format okay and there you go um sometimes you do have like this little bit that hangs over depending on if this was pushed in all the way and if um Whenever they make books, depending on the, the style of the book, this is now curved, whereas the, the style of the book is flat. So when that gets pushed in, that gets pushed out. But if that bothers you, you can just trim that off. I'm not going to be too worried about it. But there you go. Now I have two. My Old Testament and my New Testament Bible study books bound, spiral, so I can flip through them easier than what they were when they were in their previous book form i hope this video is helpful for somebody um sorry it did take a lot longer for me to do all the different segments that i thought i was going to do but it's done <laughs> um if you want to do this with the bible you can i've actually done that with the bible um if you you know, any type of book you can do this with, basically. It's just a matter of making sure that you have the right size coils. And that you have the a template to follow. Okay, I am going to go ahead and stop rambling now. And I, if you want to see a review of this particular Bible study, just kind of like a simple walkthrough of it, let me know in the comment section. And I will go ahead and work on getting that taken care of. Thanks for watching. Bye.